Hi, my name is Manuel Likani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The topic of today's discussion is free object design. To learn more about this subject, you can refer to the volume two of Mechanotropy book. In our journey toward designing the mechanotropy, we reach to the point that we need to define the magnitude of freedom and magnitude of control of our target unit and later on anchor unit. It means how much we allow the target unit to move in different dimension freely and how much we control some of the movement of the target unit. In this regard, the simplest design is free object design. In this design, there is no restriction of the movement of the target unit. We just apply a force on the target unit and based on the relationship between the line of action of the force and the center of resistance, the type of movement is defined. As I said, this is the simplest mechanical design. Uh, there is no complexity in designing because we are not applying a couple and force at the same time. We just apply a force. This by itself define two main characteristics of free object design. Simplicity and maximum amount of movement. Because you are not restricting the movement of the target unit in any dimensions, your mechanical design, whatever force it produces, it will transfer to the target unit. The biological reaction defines the magnitude of the movement. However, there is no mechanical obstacles that maximize your movement. The third characteristic of free object design is that the force and moments that you apply on the target unit is defined. You don't apply a couple on the unit, but your force depends on line of action and the center of resistance of the target unit produce a moment. By changing the point of application of the force, you can change the direction of the moment. And to that, you can define the type of movement. The fourth characteristic of the free object design is that the, similar to the target unit, that the force and moments are well-defined, the reaction force and moments also are well-defined. There is no unknown forces and moments that appear in the system that produce side effects that you don't know, which make the anchorage preparation much simpler and more precise. You don't need to have extensive anchorage preparation because you have unknown forces and moments that you don't know how to react to. So all these characteristics makes the free object design a very desirable design, especially for the start of the treatment. It does not need significant appliances and it does not need significant preparation. So what are the clinical indications for free object design? The most important indication is the large targets like a dental arch or segment. If we want to move a large target, free object design allows us to apply a simple force and define the movement based on the relationship between the line of action and the center of resistance. It has significant application during orthopedic treatment. With the orthopedic targets, most of the time we just can apply a force. Application of the force and couple is very difficult. For example, you are planning to move the maxilla. Uh, you are planning to move the whole dental arch. It's very difficult to apply a couple and a force at the same time to these targets. For example, you decided to use a face mask to move the maxilla, you just apply a force. Depends on point of application of your force, you define the type of movement that you have. So any times that you have a large target, especially orthopedic targets, application of the free object design is the design of the choice. The second indication is the major movements in vertical direction. Doesn't matter whether you have a large target, such as dental arch, a segment or a single tooth application of the vertical forces 
at the same time with the couple is difficult it is possible but it's difficult to achieve it makes the design very complex using free object design make this movement much simpler you don't need that much of a uh, preparation in this design because the line of action of the force pass close to the center of resistance the moment that appear in your system are small they are not large therefore they do not produce too much side effect and there are different ways to control those moments this is not correct when you are having a major horizontal movement major horizontal movement unfortunately because it's very difficult to apply the force close to the center of resistance most of the time we need to apply the force at the level of the crown the moments that appear in the system are large and controlling them is not that easy so free object design for the horizontal movement usually is not the design of the choice however while we are still in this subject there is situations when the free object design is the only options that we have especially for the places that uh, anatomically accessing the target is not that easy for example you have an impacted canine and you just can put an attachment on the canine and apply a force for movement of the canine in these situations you do not have that much of an option but a single force that applies to the canine you can change the duration of the force but still you can just apply a free object design the canine is not attached to anything you just apply a force and pull the canine in the direction that you want this force can be both vertical or horizontal but because you don't have any option you use the free object design to bring the target close to the place that you feel comfortable and then at that time you change to the more controlled mechanic such as semi-restricted design by now you notice that free object design is not necessarily a precision mechanics therefore it's not really good for finishing your cases is more for major movement at the start of the treatment which also has his own benefit assume you have a patient that has a significant vertical problem in the posterior teeth and in this regard the anterior teeth do not really contribute that much to the treatment the target is someplace else in the back why we need to involve the anterior teeth in the treatment free object design allows us to concentrate our mechanics to the target that we have which in this case for example is posterior teeth vertical movement and address those major movement that is the most time consuming part of the treatment without involving the anterior teeth this is very good for the patients that have a psychological problem they have a job that is very socially interactive or they have a hygiene problem we do not need to involve the teeth that do not need major movement from the start of the treatment in the treatment the free object design has also increased the application of aligners aligners are not very good in the complex movements but with free object design without involving the anterior teeth we can get rid of majority of the major movements and then when it's coming to the minor movements we can guide the treatment toward the aligners or quick braces and in that case the patient either has not been exposed to braces or if has been exposed to braces only has been exposed for the short period of time i hope you enjoyed this session of c channel uh, if you have not subscribed to our channel so far please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button